tonight on Stampede TV. A look at Milligan's art show, a follow-up on the recent shooting near campus, and a sports roundup. These stories and more are coming up next on Stampede TV. The recent shooting near campus is still undergoing investigation. On Wednesday, January 26, students received a notice that there was an active shooter near campus and the sheriff's office recommended that people in the area stay indoors that evening. A spokesperson for the Carter County Sheriff's Office says that while the suspect has not been found, there is no active threat to Milligan's campus or the surrounding area. Milligan's Fine Arts Department and Dos Gatos, the local coffee shop, have collaborated to host two cats and a herd of buffalo. Students began setting up on Tuesday evening and I went to take a look. Two Cats and a Herd of Buffalo returns this semester after being unable to be held since 2020. Students across the art, graphic design, interactive media design, and photography departments have submitted their pieces to be hung in Dos Gatos Coffee Shop from February 4th to the 28th. Senior Sarah Greer talks about her piece and why she decided to include it this year. Uh, yeah, I'm putting in a piece that I did for um, my, actually, my last class that I had with Professor Blosser before he retired, uh, which was painting one, I believe. Uh, it is an oil painting of a koi fish and a person like looking up into it and I named it, I believe, just Koi Pond. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to do uh, a traditional art piece since I don't get the chance to do those very often as a uh, more of a digital artist and I was really proud of that one so I knew I wanted to put it in somewhere even if it wasn't going to like make it into my senior graphic design show. I also had the chance to interview Associate Professor of Communications Art Brown and ask him how he felt about the show returning this year. Um, I'm really excited to have the show again. It's, it's exciting to be back. Uh, we really missed it last year and it's such a good night for students and there's always good energy about the show. For, for me as a faculty member, it's always good to just see students having fun. You can, even if you sit back and watch from afar, they're showing their friends their work and you know, getting to talk about it. And it, it's an exciting time. And really, this is the only time we get to display work off campus where ETSU has a, a gallery downtown, Milligan does not. So this is our one venue and we might be scheduling some more here and there when we can. But uh, this is our, our chance to be a part of the larger arts community and we just want to keep doing that and keep building this excitement about our shows and we want the community to see really the high level of work our students do. Two Cats and a Herd of Buffalo will open from 6 to 8 p.m. on February 4th and stay open until February 28th. Feel free to stop by on the 4th and see the artwork yourself. The show opens on Friday at 6 p.m. as part of Johnson City's first Friday events. Don't worry if you miss the reception, the show will stay up in Dos Gatos through the 28th. Family weekend is just around the corner. Friday the 11th through Sunday the 13th, parents are invited to join their students on campus for a full weekend of events. On Friday, CAB will be hosting an event, Saturday holds the Dean's List ceremony and plenty of sporting events, and on Sunday it's recommended to worship at a local church and then return to campus for afternoon volleyball games. Other campus events coming up soon include a tubing trip to Ski Beach and an open mic night. Tubing tickets are $10 and you must sign up by next Monday. Provide your own transportation or carpool with a friend. The open mic night will be on February 8th in Lower Seeger. Sign up at the QR code sent out by Brielle Davis, Director of Campus Activities. Brutus is once again hosting his annual Big Game Party. On Sunday the 13th, you can join Brutus in Sub 7 to watch the game on the big screen. The Bengals and the Rams will take to the field in Los Angeles, California for the big game. Popcorn and other snacks will be provided for the event in Sub 7. In sports news a little closer to home, last week women's basketball beat Reinhardt 78-71, but lost to Bryant 84-68 and to Columbia 79-66. Losing to Bryant broke the Lady Buffs' five-game win streak. Men's basketball beat Kentucky Christian 79-64, but also lost to Bryant 91-81. Men's volleyball beat Emory and Henry. Men's swimming beat Lise McRae, but women's swimming lost to Lise McRae, both wrapping up regular season competition. Swimmers Ben Hawkins and Gabby McPherson were both named AAC Swimmers of the Week. Men's and women's track and field were ranked 12th and 14th respectively at the VMI Winter Relays this week with several top 10 finishes across multiple events and Will Stockley was named top AAC Runner of the Week for the third week in a row. Baseball opened their season with an away win over USA Beaufort, but suffered an out-of-conference loss to Carson Newman. 
Still to come this week, swimming and track and field travel to their respective NAIA conference championships. Baseball plays Thomas More, Cleary University, and Rio Grande. Softball plays Montreat and Kentucky Christian. Men's volleyball plays Midway and UT Club. Women's basketball plays Columbia, South Carolina, and both men's and women's basketball face off against Kentucky Christian and Bluefield this week. Cycling kicks off their regular season at the University of Florida this weekend. I'm Elijah Manship for Stampede TV. And I'm Lainey Butt for Stampede TV. For the latest news information, visit us online at milliganstampede.com, tune in to The Roundup, our weekly podcast, or check us out on social media. Be sure to join us for our next newscast on February 17th, and thanks for watching.